What's good, my broskies? Welcome back to the Brostomes channel. As you guys know, the recent update just came out, releasing the two Mosquitoes. We got the Mosquito Mark VI and the Mosquito Mark IV. Uh, one of them's obviously a bomber variant, and the other one's uh, kind of like a ground attack variant. And it's, I guess we're just going to call it the fighter variant, because that's pretty much what it, all I use it for anyways. Uh, so what's the main difference between the Mark IV and the Mark VI? Well, the Mark IV comes with the eight 500-pound bombs and no machine guns at all. Uh, but the Mark VI actually comes with uh, three 500 pound bombs and uh, it also has some guns with the four through three Browning machine guns and the four 20 millimeter Hispanos so you can imagine uh, a lot of fun dog fights in that plane um, and another minor difference is the camo it's pretty much the same camo except with the mark 4 is like a little darker and a little bit in a different place if you look closely I mean it's, it's a different camo but it pretty much just looks the same there's no real way to tell them apart unless you stared it long enough um, but yeah, so let's talk about some of the specifications about this plane and how they kind of relate to real life Because uh, a lot of people are complaining that the plane's too fast. And I kind of got to agree with them I think the plane is a little it can take a little bit more uh, Air resistance than I think the real one could um, I'm just looking at the speed right now. and It's just insane how fast you're going uh, So for, for your cruising speed uh, in the mark 6 variant both these planes they pretty much go the same speed uh, at or minus weight with the bombs, but uh, your typical cruising speed is around 330 miles per hour, which is already decently fast. I'd say that's about the same speed most of the German planes can go. Uh, but in like dives or even shallow dives, you can easily push 400 plus miles per hour, which is kind of where it starts to enter the realm of fantasy. Uh, and then if you really want to go at it, you can you can push 500 plus miles per hour. Although you're gonna have lower uh, G resistance, and your plane might just rip in half. But that's typically around like 550 miles per hour. Uh, but anything below that, you can pretty much take it, which is, you know, not super realistic. And I can kind of understand where the complaints coming from. Uh, I don't think they need to fix like they don't need to change the cruising speed. They just need to make it so it breaks apart a little sooner, maybe. Um, although that's going to significantly reduce the effectiveness of this plane as a dogfighter. Um, as for maneuverability, uh, it's typically like it's reduced around 400 miles per hour. Um, which would make sense, I guess. Uh, so no complaints there. Uh, and the plane just pretty much comes with a uh, pretty poor turn rate and a pretty poor roll rate uh, just out of the box. So don't expect to be turn fighting or even scissoring with anything. You could probably try and scissor with this, but as big as a target as this is, it's probably not a great idea because they're just going to light you up. Um, although I do do some maneuvering in here, but it's in very desperate situations, and sometimes it works and a lot of times it doesn't. Um, that's just something you'll have to take into consideration during that dogfight. Um, what about for the durability? Uh, I think it's probably the most durable plane in Wings of Duty or Gunship Sequel, World War II, whatever you guys call it now. Uh, I just I just feel like I can take a lot of hits. I don't know if it's abnormal or not, but uh, it's te it's definitely a lot more hits than I found a lot of the bombers to take, or maybe it's around the same level. I just feel like this plane's insanely durable. I've been rammed in this thing before, I've been completely shot down and survived. You can pretty much fly this thing with, like, as long as you have 75% of your wings left, you can pretty much fly this thing. Uh, so, it's pretty durable, that's that's pretty much what I gotta say about it. And the footage kinda just backs up that claim there. Although I have noticed that the engines like to catch on fire, not just the engines, but even the fuel, um, which we'll talk about next. Uh, this thing got a lot of fuel. You can fly for quite a while with this. In fact, you'll probably never have to land for fuel unless you're just either that good or players stick around that long. But I found that uh, players don't typically stick around that long. Uh, but Or you're just going to run out of ammo. I don't know. However you play. Uh, but you have so much fuel, I'd even reduce it if you want just to gain a little edge. Uh, even like flying at 50% fuel is probably no problem, to be honest. Um, so yeah. What about some tactics? Uh, how do you recommend I fly this thing, or you fly this thing, whoever's flying this thing? Um, boom and zoom. It's quite obvious. Like, if you're in the Mark IV, and you're not going to dogfight, you have it very easy. Just start at a high altitude, dive on the ships, or whatever you want to bomb. Drop the bombs, and just dive out of there. Like, don't even bother climbing. You're just going to be going so fast anyways, that nothing's going to catch up to you. So, that's just pretty much what I'd recommend for that. Uh, if you're in the fighter variant, you know, maybe bomb the ships if you want maybe jettison them up to you and just boom and zoom and I wouldn't even climb right away afterwards unless the other guy's just going really slow just hit him and then dive away for very while you know as long as you need climb back up and turn around it doesn't climb that fast so that's why I wouldn't recommend climbing right afterwards 
unless you just got that significant advantage at climbing. Like, if the other dude's just going way too slow. But obviously, you use your judgment for that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's also a really great interceptor. Uh, I recommend it for intercepting. You can easily take out bombers with this. As you can see, it only takes like two bursts of the guns to take out a Stuka pretty much. So, as long as you hit them with the two direct shots, it's pretty much done for. Same with bombers. Uh, I wouldn't say it takes two shots, it takes a little bit more, but not really that much more. Because of the nose mounted machine guns, it's just does so much direct damage that there's really no problem with taking out heavy bombers or anything. You just gotta be very accurate, uh, since you can't really like spray and pray, since it's not that maneuverable. You kind of you kind of have to know where you're shooting, which uh, can be problematic sometimes. But if you're a good shot, then you're gonna land yourself a lot of kills. Honestly, how I'd recommend just to aim with this thing is just aim directly like over lead their target and just hold down the trigger and if they just run straight into it and two of those bursts hit them you're pretty much going to instant kill any fighter uh, so go ahead and try that out for yourself uh, and also work at high altitude i would not stay on the deck with this thing if you can help it uh, the longer you're on the deck the you know the worse it's going to be for you in the end because you just everything's just going to chew you up you're such a big target everyone's going to target you because uh, you're a pretty easy kill when you're on the deck so don't stay on the deck Alright, so that's enough about this plane. I think I've covered all the basics of it. There's not much more you'd want to know. Um, but if there is, and I missed something, let me know in the comments below. So, I actually learned something quite interesting while recording this video. Uh, and it's that a lot of people prefer live mic compared to these voiceovers. So, you're probably wondering, why am I still doing this voiceover? Well, it's because I did record the live mic for this. Because once I figured it out, I turned on the live mic. But I didn't check to make sure it worked. So it pretty much just sounds like a chipmunk right now. And uh, I can't, there's no way to fix it. And I'm really disappointed. Because I just kinda, you, you can only imagine my reaction right now uh, in this clip and in the previous clips. It was just, it was just awesome. Like I wish I had it still, but I don't. And that's quite unfortunate. Uh, so sorry about that. But in my future videos, definitely rolling with a live mic. I might even do some more squadron flying. Uh, I think a lot of people like those. Uh, but we'll see what happens. But I now know to do live mic, which is what's important. You guys also know that I had to cancel that last wall tournament. And it's because the school Wi-Fi here won't let me stream mobile games. And it's because I can't airplay. Uh, so I either get a Mac computer or I don't stream mobile games. And it's kind of looking like the latter right now. So I'm still going to do the tournament. I pushed it to... Well, it's a whole new tournament this time. It's going to be a whole new sign-up thing. It's going to be singles. It's going to be a lot easier on me. It's going to be on Saturday at 12 o'clock p.m. or 12 o'clock military time. I figured we're just going to go with military time from now on because that's what every other country uses and it's just a lot easier. So just remember 12 o'clock on Saturday, this Saturday, and if you want to sign up for the tournament and put your skills to the test against the best pilots and wings of duty, uh, there's going to be a Google Forms in the description where you can sign up. All planes are allowed, uh, although we, we are going to have a max amount of players that can join. Uh, and if you win this tournament, you're probably wondering what you're going to get, and you're going to get a lot of glory, but you're going to qualify for future tournaments uh, and compete against higher skilled players, and uh, maybe there may be gold on the line by then, I don't know. Uh, but mainly for glory and for a lot of fun. Uh, the question is, will it be live streamed? Uh, and unfortunately, I can't live stream the event, but I, I'm definitely going to record the event, so uh, it should be pretty epic still. There should be some pretty good videos on that. So look forward to that event. I'm not going to give up on these Wings of Duty events. They're just going to be a little different now. Um, but that's pretty much it for that. Uh, as for the upload schedule, I know I haven't been posting as much as I usually post. Uh, but I'm kind of working on that now. I mean, these videos take a long time to, to make. They take between 5 to 10 hours per video. And uh, there's not a lot of incentive to actually make these videos. But I really like seeing your guys' feedback, the comments, all the likes. So if you wouldn't mind taking the time right now to leave a like on this video and leave a comment. Uh, that's more than enough for me, and I appreciate that. But I'm definitely going to try to post more now, hopefully two to three times a week. Uh, that's my goal. It's really hard, but I'm working on it, so it should be a lot of fun. Alright, so that's enough of ignoring like 10 minutes of straight gameplay. This was probably one of the cooler clips. It was this and the other time my plane caught on fire. I actually did a remarkable save on this plane uh, before crashing into the ocean here. Uh, when it was not on fire, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but... That thing, that thing was going down, but I was able to recover it. 
uh, by just putting full right rudder and uh, turning the flaps up and reducing my speed for a bit until it stabilized out. Totally unrealistic, but hey, I give it props. This durability is pretty epic. <laughs> so, I mean, I like to see if I can recover the planes, but uh, you, you can't always recover, especially when like most of the wings gone. Uh, so in this clip, I'm just chasing this Falker Wolf. Wait, is that a Falker Wolf? Oh, this one's an epic one. Ah, oh, man, I wish I had the live mic for this. <laughs> I really do. Basically, what's happening is this dude wants to bomb that battleship, right? And I'm getting hit by the friendly flag, but it doesn't seem to actually be doing damage to me. I get him here at the last moment. I think, oh man, I saved the ship. Wow. And his plane crashed in the water. But the bomb actually dropped and it hit the ship. He didn't even drop the bomb himself. It, when, I, when I shot him down, the bomb was like fell out of the canopy and just completely destroyed the ship. So that was pretty epic. Um, I wanted to salvage his gameplay so bad, even though that the live mic didn't work out. <laughs> that is, I just couldn't give up his footage. And you guys are probably tired of me killing Stukas with this thing by now. So we're just gonna end it with this one bombing run. Actually, it was kind of more of a kamikaze run. I was pretty much fed up <laughs> by this point. I already put like two hours of gameplay in. But yeah, that's our final kill for today. Enough of the killing of poor little Stukas or whatever. But if you enjoyed the video, smash like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, join our Discord, get connected with the community. And I'll see you briskies later.